Hello and welcome back to Bourbon and Bullets. Today I want to talk to you about diversity and culture. Now when I say diversity and culture I mean the exact, well, the people who are proponents for it mean the exact opposite. They mean no diversity in culture and well more specifically they mean no diversity of thought. Now I stumbled onto this woman Jenny Morecci who uh, purports to be a novelist. Now it's really hard to be a good writer. I fancy myself as, as a pretty good writer. Um, by the way, if you want to pick up my book, Puritanical, uh, it's on Amazon, link in the description, and I guarantee you there's something in there to offend just about everybody. But if you want to be a good writer, you don't go about it by limiting your thoughts, saying this is the way things have to be. But anyway, so this woman, she has a popular YouTube channel giving out writerly advice. Um, and here she hits the jackpot on just about everything you can do Anywho, wrong. get ready for what will inevitably be my most thumbs down video. We're talking about diversity. Well, at least she has the self-awareness, uh, enough self-awareness to realize that Orwellian uh, wrong think uh, principles for writing is not going to be popular. She doesn't have the self-awareness to realize why would that be, do you think? Cue the outrage. Whenever diversity in fiction is discussed, it brings out a bunch of people who seethe at the thought. Why must I write about people who are different from me? I mean, that's literally what writing fiction is all about, so there's that. So here she is making a career handing out writing advice on YouTube, but apparently she's never heard of the adage, write what you know. Now, okay, it's true, you do write about people that are obviously different from you. You write a variety of different characters, but you write them because they're interesting characters, not because you're trying to hit a diversity quota. This topic was requested by two of my patrons from over on Patreon, Jaden and Caroline. Jaden and Caroline, the coolest people in the world. Blah. Both Jaden and Caroline wanted to know how to properly write an array of diverse characters, and more importantly, how to do so without being offensive. Here's my advice to Jada and Caroline. You're never going to be writers if you're worried about offending people. So just stop now. You've already shot yourself in the foot worrying about offending people. You can you can you have no future as writers. This is if that is your paramount thought, it's over for you. So just give up now. Save yourself a lot of time and and, and really spare the rest of us your horrible SJW um, musings. Before we get started, I'm going to point out the obvious here and that's my whiteness. I am not, nor would I ever claim to be, an expert on diversity. I am not, nor would I ever claim to be, an expert on diversity. I'm still learning, I still make mistakes. My goal is simply to help other writers make fewer mistakes. We're in this together. That said, I'm going to address the most common questions and complaints I receive about diversity in fiction. What exactly constitutes diversity? Diversity in fiction basically means your cast isn't strictly white, heterosexual, cisgender males, with a couple of females thrown into the mix. You know, Ernest Hemingway, Leo Tolstoy, Chekhov, I mean, you know, Mark Twain, let me, I could just go on and on and on and on and on about white male writers. Great, brilliant, immortal white male writers who never worried about writing about straight white males and <laughs> I don't know, cisgendered, you know, thank God that never, that never came up in their vocabulary wrote just breathtaking works of genius. And they wrote what they knew. They wrote, actually, I mean, in the case of um, Shakespeare, another, uh, well, maybe not, maybe not uh, entirely heterosexual in the case of Shakespeare. Um, that's open to debate. But, you know, in the case of Shakespeare, let his, um, you know, his immense imagination just abound and create it, you know, incredibly diverse cast of characters through his career as a playwright. Not ever worrying about, well actually, I mean worried about offending the powers that be, but even then he took the piss out of people slyly. Um, but that's how you do it. Not going about uh, setting up these rules about, you know, let's have, well we're going to have this character, you know, because she's Asian and a black and a gay and a transgendered and 
Yeah. How good do you think the story is going to be when you're trying to hit diversity quotas instead of just, you know, writing a good story with interesting you're characters? You're including people of color, anyone on the LGBTQAI spectrum, different genders or gender expressions, including non-binary. You're also including different body shapes or people with mental or physical disabilities or illnesses. Did you get that? You can't even fat shame somebody in a... In a, in a work of fiction now, so I guess you know Jabba the Hutt would be out because you know we can't make can't make fun of fat, um, grossly obese aliens or something. But then again, he clearly wasn't a feminist because you know Slave Leia. So I guess maybe you were allowed to make fun of him, but uh, also Slave Leia. Man, I miss, I miss that. For the sake of brevity, I'll mostly be referencing people of color and homosexuality throughout this video, but please be 2,000% aware that diversity covers far more than that. Be 2,000% aware that diversity covers far more than that, just no straight white males. Why is diversity in fiction so important? The most obvious answer is realism. The real world is filled with a wide variety of people who look and behave differently from one another. There are rare situations where a cast of identical people can work, but nine times out of ten, if you want your story to be believable, you gotta include a mix. The second and surprisingly controversial answer is representation. Everyone wants to see themselves represented in fiction, and for some reason, this really pisses people off. Why can't they just deal with it? They have been dealing with it forever okay so now we get to the crux of the matter and this this obviously stems from her education at whatever god-awful liberal arts college she went to and learned that of course dead white men are the you know the root of all evil if people you know if people of different cultures and ethnicities what have you if they don't like you know largely european culture then you know what create your own Build, you know, create your own characters. They can be Japanese. They can be, they can be whatever you know, whatever you are. Um, but create your own. Don't denigrate white male writers because that's they wrote these great works of art. But this is the thing, of course. You know, that to, to like, you know, Tolstoy, in my opinion, probably. I mean, you know, to to say you have a favorite novel is is always hard to say because I mean, you know, how high is up? But I I still believe that War and Peace. I mean, just in the broadest sense, it is my favorite novel, and it is just an incredible work of art. And, but of course, you know, in her book, it's like, well, but where, where are the, where are the people on the spectrum? Where are the people? Where are the people of color? Well, you know, so there you go. Not a good work of art. You know, it's a piece of crap because you know, white male, heterosexual, Christian pff, can't have that. There was, where's the representation? How do I write in diversity without being offensive? The easiest way to do this is to write your characters as real human beings. Your character is more than just Korean. They are more than just bisexual. These are traits, not their identity. Build a full, realized person. Don't go with stereotypes and don't shove the character into the background. Additionally, and I think this goes without saying, don't use slurs to describe their physical appearance. If you're not sure if a descriptor is offensive, it probably is. Again, I'm sure she has no problem uh, using slurs to describe white men, especially, well, straight white men. And furthermore, if you're writing something, again, just, you know, to rehash, if you're writing something and your first priority is you're worried about being offensive and you're trying to check all the diversity boxes, you're not writing anything that anybody wants to read, including the SJWs that you're hoping to appeal to. You know what? They don't like that shit either. And of course, allow people with first-hand experience to help you out through the writing process. You should always recruit diverse betas at an absolute minimum. Even the most well-intentioned person can unknowingly write something offensive. I've done it. Unknowingly wrote something offensive. And look how she's just so upset with herself. Oh my God. If you're taking writing advice from this woman, you're writing absolute Pablum, you know, she's saying, you know, bring in people of color to tell you how to construct a character so it's believable. No, just write what you observe. And if you're not out in the world observing how people interact with each other, then you're not a writer. You you have no clue. Even if you're trying to write fantasy, I mean, this is this was the genius of all great writers, the, in, from Hemingway to Shakespeare to Tolstoy. They were all great observers. They went out. They saw how society worked. This is why great literature. It, it trans it transcends time and place. You will find things even even in the uh, rush, world of Russian aristocrats and war and peace. You will still find something relevant to your life because that's how 
that's what a great writer Tolstoy was. And the same thing goes for, for Hemingway and Shakespeare. I mean, you know, Shakespeare obviously writing about something that has nothing to do with modern life, yet his truths are universal. Um, you know, to be or not to be, to better to have loved and lost and never loved at all. I mean, just, you know, one after the other. But, you know, this is where writing is in the liberal arts, SJW, wrong think world, where it's first and foremost, oh God, I have to find out how to write the right person of color and not offend anyone. That's my goal. Hire a sensitivity reader. This is a person who combs through your work looking for anything culturally insensitive, any erasure, or any unintentional offense. So hire an SJW snowflake and have him or her comb your manuscript for any signs of wrong think. Yeah, that's that's good advice. That's just great. What if diversity isn't historically accurate to my story? Are you sure it's not historically accurate? I see a lot of people using the historical inaccuracy argument, and most of the time, they're wrong. Well, movie reviewers were offended last year by Dunkirk because it didn't have enough people of color or women uh, being represented in that historical movie about 99.99% of the white males that were at the evacuation of Dunkirk on both sides, either the, you know, either the Germans or the Allies. They didn't do any legitimate research regarding the racial groups or racial relations of the country or era they're writing about. They just relied on general assumptions, which are often incorrect, because erasure is a thing. Yeah, and I'm also sure this chick really believes that Wakanda is a real place and that Ethiopia, which, or Liberia, which, neither of which were ever colonized, are secretly just advanced super civilizations, but us evil white males have erased their culture. So before you use this excuse, do the research. If Shakespeare can feature people of color, you probably can too. Okay, so, so she actually acknowledges Shakespeare, and I guess, First and foremost, the person of color would be the Moor in, in Othello, but um, I doubt that she has much of an understanding of Shakespeare beyond, you know, what she's been taught, again, in a horrible liberal arts school, you know, basically, you know, evil white males. And also, again, when she's talking about history, I bet if you quiz this woman on some of the most, you know, basic historical eras, she would be completely ignorant. But Jenna, when I add one black person, I get accused of writing a token. What gives? You wrote a token. That's what gives. Here's the thing. If there are only two characters in your book, then it would make sense that just one of them is a person of color. But in most other situations, it doesn't. Typically, if you have a reasonably sized cast of white characters and then one person of color, people are just going to assume you threw that character in there to meet your diversity quota. Or it's just a character that makes sense in the universe that you've created and you don't give a shit about diversity quotas. Your audience wants realistic stories. They want to be represented. They want to read about well-rounded, multi-dimensional characters. That's what you should care about. Actually, you've made it very clear that what we should care about when it comes to writing is not offending anybody. So if you want to write a multi-dimensional character, you can't do it if your first and foremost concern is offending people. And I know some people say you should only add diversity if there's a reason for it, but people don't need a reason to have brown skin or to be attracted to the same sex. The reason is they were born that way. People are just people. They don't have to justify their existence. But Jenna, it's just not believable to include six gay people in a book. I don't know if you know this, but people like to hang out with other people they have things in common with. Because of this, lots of gay people hang out with other gay people. But straight white males can't be included because, I guess, you know, diversity. And this is where this woman is just so completely clueless. I mean, listen to her. She's talking about, yeah, you can have six gay characters. Well, what if you don't want to write a gay book? What if it's something you have no knowledge about? But that takes precedence in her mind because, you know, we have to be inclusive. But it has, no, even though it has absolutely, you know, might have nothing to do with, with, with your topic or whatever. It's like, no, you got to hit those quotas. Gotta hit those quotas, gotta, but I mean, you know, we don't need a quota for white, straight white males, you know, because that's just evil. But, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, have six gay characters, and oh my god, if you could make them, you know, gay and also Muslim and black, oh my god, cha-ching, and maybe throw in a couple of lesbians or a couple of transgendered in there, oh my god, you've hit the, you've hit the jackpot, that's just great writing. No, it's not.
So yeah, it's completely believable for there to be six gay people in your book, just like it's believable for there to be six black people or six people with disabilities. People connect with other people who get them. I'm so sick of everyone demanding diversity. Can't I just write the characters I want to write? No, you can't, according to her, because that's evil. And forget entertainment, forget good literature, forget creating art. It's all about hitting those diversity quotas. I think the real question is, why do you only want to write straight white people? Creative writers don't think about meeting a diversity quota in order to pacify the masses. They just create multi-dimensional characters. Their skin color or sexual orientation is just one characteristic among many. And inevitably, this is where the illogic logic of the SJW liberal finally falls apart and she contradicts herself. She's done an entire video saying that you have to hit these diversity quotas and not offend anybody. And then in the end she says, yeah, but you know, just don't worry about it. Just write multi-dimensional characters and, you know, the rest will take care of itself. You know, great writers don't worry about writing multi-dimensional characters. Yeah, except that in your book, if they, if those characters, even if they're great and they're, they're vibrant and it's an incredible story, you don't care because you're not hitting the, the, the quota, uh, the, the diversity quotas. Your whole thing is, it's like, yeah, don't worry about it as long as you make sure that you include lots of gay people, lots of transgenders, lots of people of color. Yeah, but other than that, don't worry about it. So the fact that your mind exclusively goes toward straight, white, able-bodied, and mostly male is probably a sign that you need to work on your creativity and general awareness. Or that you're just writing what you know in the great tradition of celebrated novelists throughout the centuries. To the folks I offended because they don't want to write diversity, I'm sorry. Also, that's a lie. I don't give a shit. Diversity in fiction is pretty simple. Just create a cast of realistic, unique people, write them as layered individuals, and poof, you're done. Well, no, I'm not offended. I'm just gonna point out that if you follow this woman's advice, as I've said earlier, you're gonna write terrible fiction. You're gonna be writing SJW quota nonsense, you're not going to be writing the supposedly multidimensional layered characters that they, she thinks will come about from meeting diversity quotas and writing um, in a way not to offend anybody. You know, George Orwell, he offended the dictator, Papa Doc Duvalier, the dictator of Haiti, and he said it was always amazing that a man wielding a pen could rise, uh, invoke the ire of a man with an army behind him. But, you know, in this day and age, you know, these poor little snowflakes that went to some, you know, pathetic little liberal arts college, they don't want to embrace their tradition. It's all about, no, let's not offend anybody. Let's just keep it really nice and, you know, we'll include everybody. Everyone will have a voice except for those horrible white Christian straight males because we don't want any of them. We've had too much of that already. And it'll just be one. Yeah, you want to read that? You think that'll be fun to read? Yeah, exactly. No, it won't. It'll be crap. So if you listen to this woman, you're going to be a crap writer. Uh, but, you know, First Amendment, even though I'm pretty sure she would not be a First Amendment champion, you know, it would definitely be about, uh, you know, First Amendment, but... No hate speech, which, you know, we all know that the how ridiculous they are about that. Um, you know, but she's got a right, of course, to say whatever she wants. But uh, she just doesn't want to uh, extend that right to other people. Other people being people like me. All right, anyway, so enough of that today. A little bit different. Just wanted to point out, um, you know, some of the voices out there that are trying to change our culture you know the the you know it just doesn't come from you know sort of these government edicts it comes from people like this and you know who who were brought up in this academia of you know this you know where they call it inclusiveness when it's really it's not it's 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 a a conformity of thought uh you know the the cultural marxism you know for for lack of a better term um and that's where we are and if you wonder why movies like last jedi are made and their crap, yeah. Well, it begins at the begins way back in in school at the primary level and right through college. And you end up with people that are more concerned about reaching diversity quotas than ever creating great stories that challenge your imagination. Okay, thanks as always for watching and listening to Bourbon and Bullets, and please like, share, and subscribe.